to have both of you here in the studio with us. Well, our makeshift studio. I'll start with you, Dr. Uh, Rochedana, and I want to talk to you about education. Uh, the president talked about universal education for all school children in this country, making it affordable, accessible, and also quality driven. When the president says that, do you believe it is all these are feasible? Uh, that's the objective of the nation. And if you go back to our constitution, we make provision for that. And it's been started by previous governments. So if the president is going to continue that, there's no problem with that. One. That's all what everybody in this country wishes uh, we are able to achieve. Okay. How about Sami you, Samia, on education? Um, we have wonderful aspirations on everything, including education. But I find it difficult to believe that we will be able to offer free education if we still are implementing policies that will make it very difficult for us to spend more on education. Policies like? Our policies on trade, our signing the IMF bailout agreement alone means that we will have to cut on spending. Now, we have to be told the truth. Ghanaians need to understand the conditions that are attached to the IMF bailout. And in most cases, these conditions mean that we privatize state assets, we privatize um, but if it will, will ensure efficiency, what is the problem? If it will ensure efficiency in the system? They don't necessarily ensure efficiency. Hundreds of state enterprises were decommissioned or sold in the, from the 80s till now, but not, we have not been guaranteed profits. They have not gone into productive ventures. There is no rule or law that says public is bad, private is good. Hmm? But what I was talking about is cuts in spending and in investing on productive ventures. Normally the IMF conditions mean that we have to spend much less and we don't have the freedom to spend on what we want. So I can't see how we will be able to intervene socially with these conditions. What I would like to see is that in the State of the Nation addresses, we tell Ghanaians everything, the truth, the good you think and the, the bad. You fell short of telling us the entire truth? I think we are economical with the truth because we are not telling Ghanaians the agreement that we are about to sign, how it will affect their lives. The same thing with the economic partnership agreement, um, which would mean that we are opening up our markets more to goods from Europe. Now, the implication is that it will make it harder for us but to the produce did say our that own he, he has plans to transform the economy into an export-driven one. Yes, and plans are plans, but I am talking about policies. There has to be policy coherence. Your plans must echo your policies and vice versa. But if you take policies that will contradict the aspirations of your plans, then there is something wrong. And this is why for the past 20 odd years, we've been having State of the Nation addresses every year. But today, 2015, what does Ghana have? Doom so, doom so very high prices, especially for food, that many people are struggling to, um, uh, to afford more than one meal a day. So we are saying, fine, we have very good plans, but our problem is with the policies. Okay. Our policies must be in line, must make it possible or credible for these plans. Okay, let me talk to you, Ms. Uh, Dr. Happen. Richard Anane, about the IMF bailout, a billion dollars. I was speaking to the finance minister uh, not long ago, and he said it will mark the turning point of the economy. You, you want to jump onto that bandwagon? I, I, I'm surprised that a billion dollars can be a turning point, where we could go for over $3 billion from elsewhere. Now, if we can go for over $3 billion, 
What's the difference between the three billion and a billion? Now, over the years, how many, uh, how much by way of loans have we contracted? And they were never a turning point. How can just one billion be a turning point? I think it's more about macro and microeconomic discipline. And it's only because the MF is now going to look over your shoulders. That, so we should rather be told that is a looking over the shoulders which is going to be the turning point. It's not so much the one billion. But the, the, it will instill some discipline in the system. What I'm saying is this. One billion compared to three billion, which could it's be a really turning nothing. point. Huh? So it is more the looking over your shoulders, which is rather going to be the turning point. And we have to accept that. We are now giving ourselves up to the IMF. Please come and look over our shoulders and ensure that we do the right things. That's what we are asking the IMF to do. And so you are disappointed we went to the IMF then? I cannot see how $1 billion can be a turning point. That's how I want to uh, uh, say Okay. Not, not true. Now you heard Samia talk about exports and imports, the EPA. Um, the president did mention that uh, the economy is on track to be transformed into an export-driven one. Now there are many who say that. How do you make it an export-driven economy when number one there is no power, uh, the manufacturing companies are not there, they are not accessing the loans to set up. Um, you see some light at the end of the tunnel. Hmm. Have you gone to Takradi recently? No, I haven't. Get your people to go to Takradi. Go to the beach road, where a lot of the people who were investing, especially in the oil industry, went to live. Go to see whether they are now living there. Go to see whether the offices are now there. You will see for rent, for rent, for rent. They are now all living to La Côte d'Ivoire. That is what should tell us about the way our economy is going. It's not just about coming with platitudes, not coming to tell us things. It's about what is on the ground. Now, if people are leaving your economy and you are happy about uh, foreign direct investments, now, compared to maybe by the end of this year, you will find that the FDI may have gone down. And it's gone down because of the fact that people don't see the economy the way they will have wished it were. And that's how come people are worried about the electricity matter. And that's how we think that all of us must come together because the electricity matter is not a problem only for the government. We are all suffering. We are all suffering, and we all want the government to be able to tackle it and get solutions to it. If, like I know, if government came in and a lot of the projects started previously have been continued, I'm sure by this time we'll have had a stable... You think some were abandoned? Suspensions and abandonments. And look, I am aware that a committee was set up way back 2005, 2006. I'm aware that committee was looking even more at nuclear energy for Ghana. Some of us, me, I believe in nuclear energy. I believe that we do not have to always permit ourselves to be uh, under the uh, direction or the vagaries of the weather. It should be what we can determine. Now, if we have the nuclear plant, you can produce your energy all the time. I do appreciate that some people may not understand it because they have yeah. problems with them. But I can assure you it's one of the neatest ways of getting energy. And we can even position ourselves because President Kufo got uh, the nuclear and allied sciences uh, department set up at Tabinia. And we are producing the requisite human resource that can manage this. But if we position ourselves properly and we are able to set these things up, we can position ourselves in West Africa to be able to supply energy to all the West African you countries. the president when he says he will fix it? Well, I wish it could be fixed. That's how I, I want to see it. Because it's not a matter of wanting to believe or not to believe. I want the thing to be fixed. And if we can make consultations with people, I am sure we have people who are so nationalistic and want to see Ghana move, such that if he decides that he is in consultation with them, we can fix it. I would rather submit, uh, we have said this elsewhere, we, I would rather submit that he decides to have breakfast meetings with the two former presidents who are alive. And I'm sure if he has even fortnightly breakfast meetings with them, a lot of problems will be resolved in this country. Samia, do you believe that, that the problem can be fixed? He can fix the problem? We can fix the problem. Uh, we can fix the problem. Um, I think the government has had an opportunity for the past over five years or so. And the seven, problems, actually. In seven, the seventh year seven. now. <laughs> Thank you. And the problems have not been fixed. I believe 
you have to govern with a philosophy and with an economic policy that is based on your own specific context, not listening to prescriptions. I greatly admire the example of the ruling Greek party today, which yeah. has had the courage to go and renegotiate the bailout. If the CPP was in power, this is what we would do. You see, nothing less than a change in direction would help Ghana. We need to face the facts that the way we've been managing our economy has not delivered to the people. It might sound good, but it has not delivered. And for us to deliver, we need an economic revolution, a total radical shift. The terms of the debate must change. Okay. Whenever we are given advice, we have to seriously question it. Like Honorable was saying, we have very competent people here. Are we saying we need the IMF to help us monitor what is our own? That doesn't make sense. 50 year, uh, years after independence, you know? And how do you transform your economy? With one sugar factory? If we had pursued the development plan, seven-year plan of farming Kruma, and by 1970 we would have had seven sugar factories. And the sugar factory we are having today, who owns it? Where is the money, the proceeds going to go? Please, let us look amongst what okay. we've got. We are capable. Ghana is capable okay. of delivering. Thank you very much, Samia, from the CPP, and also Dr. Richard Anani, for your time here no this afternoon.